Hey guys, I'm Emily from The Blue Mouse, and today I'm going to show you how to make this two-color brioche cowl. It's a very easy beginner brioche project, so if you've never worked in two-color brioche, this is a perfect starter pattern. So let's get started. All right, so using our dark color or our contrasting color, we're going to cast on 88 stitches using the long tail cast on. And because your project is going to stretch a lot when you block it in the end, you wanna cast on very loosely so that it has room to stretch as well. So once you've cast on all your stitches, you're going to want to join in the round. And I have an invisible join in the round method. And if you wanna use that, cast on one extra stitch so you have 89 stitches. And if you've done that, then position your needle so that the working yarn is on your right needle. And then you take the first stitch on your left needle and you slide it to your right. And then you take what was the first stitch on your right hand needle, the last stitch that you cast on, and you pull it over that stitch you just slid over and off your needle. And then you just pull both the tail and the working yarn tight and you've done your invisible join in the round, then you can add your stitch marker and we're ready for the setup row. So for our setup row, we're going to continue working in our dark color or our contrasting color here. And what we're going to do is work a slip one yarn over followed by a purl one to the end of your row. So bring your yarn to the front and you're going to do a slip one yarn over. So this is how I do it. Some people do it differently, but I find this to be the easiest way. So you're going to take your right hand needle and go into this first stitch as if to purl. And we're going to yarn over, but you don't purl. Instead, you just slide that stitch to your right hand needle. So now you have two loops. You have your slip stitch and then you have your yarn over. And then we just purl one stitch. And then we do another slip one yarn over. So go into that stitch as if to purl, yarn over, but just slip it to your right hand needle and then purl one. And you just repeat that to the end of your row. And now that you've finished your setup row, you're ready to work your first row in your repeat. So we're done working with color B for this row. And now we're going to pick up our lighter color or our color A and we're going to work row one with it. So don't cut color B. Instead, you're just going to leave it hanging in the front of your project and then you're going to pick up your color A. And what I like to do is I like to wrap it around my pinky a few times and then just hold it there so that creates tension for you when you're working your first row. And now we're going to work a brioche knit followed by a slip one yarn over for this entire row. So a brioche knit sounds more complicated than it actually is. So remember how we did a slip one yarn over for the previous row? So you've got these two loops here for your first stitch. You have your slip stitch and then you have your yarn over. So a brioche knit is essentially just a knit two together where you knit that slip one and you knit that yarn over together. So you go into both those loops and then you just knit them together and that's it. That is a brioche knit. And then for your slip one yarn over with your light color, so you're going to yarn over first and then you're going to go into that first stitch and slip it purl wise. So now you have these two stitches here and then you do another brioche knit. So you go into those two loops, so the slip stitch and then the yarn over from the previous row. You go into both those loops and you knit them together and then you do your slip one yarn over. So you yarn over and then you slip that stitch as if to purl, and then you just repeat that. There's one little extra thing that you have to do at the very last stitch, and I'll show that to you in a second. And then when you get to your last stitch, which is going to be a slip one yarn over, you yarn over and then you slip it, but your yarn over is gonna kind of fall away when you start your second row. So just keep it in the back as you're working your second row, and then you'll have to remember when you get to the end of your second row to make sure that your yarn over is there. And I'll show you what that means in the second row. So move your stitch marker and you can just kind of let your light colored yarn drop to the back and pick up your dark colored yarn from the front. And I pull the dark yarn a little bit tight before I work my first stitch because it can loosen up while you're working your first row. And for row two, you're going to work a slip one yarn over followed by a brioche purl. So I'll show you how to do that. So you're going to work a slip one yarn over and you're going to do it the same way that you did for your setup row. So you go into this first stitch as if to purl, then you yarn over, but you don't purl it, you just slip it to your right hand needle. 
and then you have two loops on your right hand needle. And now we're going to do a brioche pearl, which is essentially just a pearl two together. So you see the two loops on your left hand needle, the slip one and the yarn over from your previous row. You're going to go into both those loops as if to purl, yarn over and pull through. So you're essentially just purling them together. And now you're going to work another slip one yarn over. So go into that stitch as if to purl, yarn over and slip it to your right hand needle. And now we're going to work another brioche purl. So go into those two loops on your left hand needle and purl them together. And that's it. You're just going to work that to the end of your row. And there's something special that you have to do with the last stitch. So I'll show you that in a second. So when you get to your last two, remember you slip one yarn over to the second to last stitch. And then you come to your last stitch and you wanna make sure that your yarn over with the light colored yarn is still there. It's probably gonna be loosely hanging over. If it's fallen to the back, you're just going to put it over your needle there. You just wanna make sure that there's two loops here. And again, if there is just one and your light colored yarn is just hanging in the back, you bring it between your needles and back again so that it's over your needle. And then you're just going to brioche purl them. So go into both and purl them together. And now you've secured that. You can kind of pull it tight a little bit if you want. And then you're just going to repeat those two rows. So not your setup row, but row one and row two. And remember at the end of row two, always remember to check that your yarn over is there because every first row that will happen and every second row you need to check that your yarn over is there. And then you're just going to repeat those two rows 83 more times. So that's a total of 166 more rows and then you're going to bind off. So we're just about ready to bind off after working all of our rows and we've reached the correct length. We just have to work one final row with your darker color or color B. You're going to start out and you're just going to knit the first stitch normally. Usually you would just slip it with a yarn over, but instead we're going to knit this first stitch normally and then we're going to brioche purl the second one. And then you just knit the next stitch normally. Brioche purl the second one. And you're going to repeat that for the entire row. And when you get to the last stitch, you wanna make sure that you have a yarn over to go with that last stitch. Sometimes this piece of yarn can kind of fall away, so you just wanna make sure that it's still there. Bring your yarn to the front and brioche purl your last stitch. Now you can remove your stitch marker and then we're just going to bind off with a simple knit bind off. So you knit two and then you pull the first stitch over the second and off. Now you wanna match the tension of your cast on. So remember we cast on pretty loosely, so we wanna bind off pretty loosely. Now if you're worried about binding off too tightly, you could take a pair of knitting needles that are a size or two larger than what you're working on. So I'm working with a size US 6 and I'm going to bind off with the size US 8. Otherwise, you can just kind of pull it loose as you're working it if you don't have a spare set of needles. So I'm not going to transfer them to the other size first. Instead, I'm just going to work them straight off of the size 6. So I just knit two normally. And I'm just going to pull that first stitch over and off the second. And you've bound off one stitch knit one more and repeat. Pull that stitch over and off and you're just going to keep doing that all the way around. When you've bound off all your stitches and you just have the one remaining, you can either pull the yarn through it and just weave in your ends or I can show you a trick to kind of neaten up this last little bit here. Because as you can see, there's a little bit of a break here and it just doesn't look quite as clean as we'd like it to. So instead of pulling the yarn through this loop, we're actually just going to pull the loop bigger until the yarn comes out, thread it through a yarn needle, and then what we're going to do is we're going to find the two bars that made up the first stitch that you bound off, which I believe are right here. Put your needle under the bars that make up that V of your first bound off stitch, and then you just pull it to the back and kind of tighten it up, and then you're going to go into the middle of your last stitch. So not the one that you pulled the yarn through, but the actual last bound off stitch. 
And you can see that there's two bars here. It creates this kind of V. So you're going to go into the middle. And what I mean by that is you're essentially just going to go through the back loop. So that V, you're going to go into the back loop of it and then pull through to the back, pull it tight. And you can kind of tell that it's made this mock knit stitch here and it's made your edge look much better. Now that we've made that, you can weave in your ends and you're good to go. So I always like to kind of make a knot here. So I pull it to the right tension and then I'm just going to go under one of these bars back here, pull the yarn through a little bit so that there's a loop. And then I go back through that loop to create a knot. And I just kind of pull it while holding it in place. And you want to be careful not to pull it too tight or you'll pull the ridge way too tight. So now that my yarn is secure, I be can begin to weave in my ends. And you can kind of do this however you like, but with the dark colored yarn, I like to go underneath the two bars that make up the knit stitch in one of the columns and go one way, then go back the other way underneath two bars of the next stitch below it and just do that a few times. Because my stitch is already secure with that slip knot, so weaving them in like this is only just to keep it from unraveling. And then I just go back through one set of it twice and then I'm ready to cut my yarn. And now we're going to do the same thing with the light colored yarn. So just thread it through a yarn needle and then I'm just going to find a loop, go underneath it and pull through so that I have a loop and then I go back through the loop. And now it's a little bit easier, I think, to weave in your ends with the light color from this angle. So you see all these little bars that almost look like a spine here? You're going to go underneath those bars and then you just pull through and you can cut it and you're good. Now do the same thing for the ends on the cast on edge. And once you have all of them woven in, you can block your project and you're ready to wear it. Here's what it looks like before you block it. So it's pretty thin. You can see my hand almost as tall as it is wide. So blocking will widen it out a lot this way and it might shorten it a little bit too. All right guys, so I've finished blocking my cowl and as you can see, it has grown a lot. It's a lot wider than it was before. So as you can tell, my hand was almost as long as it was wide before it was blocked. And now it's about one and a half. And as you can tell from the intro of this video, it looks much better on after it's been blocked. So blocking is very important when working this pattern. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed making this cowl, tag me in your projects on Ravelry or in your photos on Instagram. I would love to see your progress. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more. It really helps me out and there's going to be a lot more free patterns coming this year.